But we got to respect the fact that our understanding is limited and that science requires different views to contend equally and that we need to write the truth. I mean, do you think that we've seen an acceleration of the kind of forcing function around a uniform voice? I mean, it seems to me that the past 18 months with COVID has really amplified what you're describing. Um, I think there are, you know, lots of dissenting views out there for how COVID could be managed, what the potential efficacy is for um, repurposed drugs. And truthfully, I've struggled to wade through the literature on this stuff. Um, and, you know, you'll always find somebody who's made it their, you know, it's their mission to understand how this drug or that drug or this intervention or that intervention is the, is the, is the solution to the problem. Um, but there's no denying that, that such people have been, you know, pretty roundly silenced, uh, for, for this. And it begs the question that, you know, should we be paying more attention to these views and when do these views become so fringe and marginal that they're actually harmful? Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's there because they can be, they can be, and, and we've got to be, um, but that's why I think when the, the first level of discussion is, is should be amongst experts where you can call out views that are, um, so divorced from experimental, uh, evidence that they're not serious views. I do think we can separate out, um, as I mean, COVID, COVID's a great example. I heard good people express somewhat different views at different times on different issues. Not the same person, but one person had a view and you say, gee, that's got a good point. And the other person had a view. That's a good point. But, but they were all within a channel that was, um, that made sense to me as a physician, not an infectious disease expert. So I'm not talking about legitimizing any possible view because it's a possible view. I am saying that people were saying, were pointing out different aspects of a complex problem. And they might put a little more emphasis here and a little, but the result would be, oh, I, 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 I understand more clearly that there is a, uh, a series of choices involved and, and, and it's challenging to go through them. In, in Canada, the government, we had much longer periods between the first and second vaccination. So more people got yep. their first dose before the second. So I get that. That's a... That's a uh, decision in real time that's a real challenge. That, it's, that you can't be sure that you got it right at the moment you're making it. But you're the responsible person. You got to deal with it. But it was in the open so you know it was being done. So I'm good with that process because I know what happened and we can assess the, the, the outcome. I, I'm not good with someone just shrieking. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's the, what I'm against is saying, because we can't have somebody shrieking, we can't have any debate. That's wrong. That's totally wrong. Because it winds up then, we make mistakes where we, we don't have to make mistakes. And, 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 the responsibilities we have to make recommendations to our patients are so awesome that we, our humility, we need to, we need to be humble and say, okay, give me your best shot. I'll give you my best shot. <laughs> and we're colleagues. We're not enemies. I mean, I disagree with lots of people because I have a scientific viewpoint, but they're not my enemies. 
and we have ways of discussing this. And if I'm in the room, I can say, hey, you said that you show, I'll show you line 26 in your paper, which contradicts you. And he has to respond in front of other people. That's what I believe in, is the testing of the argument in a, in a, in a jury of your peers. Is that culture being watered down in science? Is it the same today as it was 30 years ago? No, I think that's the weakness. I think that's the, I think that's the crucial weakness. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.